Speaking so, of contracts, you've got um, schools who've signed contracts with teachers and coaches, um, and you promised them a, yeah. a, an amount of money that starts for the next fiscal year. Are you going to follow through on that con uh, promise? Yeah, one thing that we have, have really um, uh, been strong about the last four years is when we make a commitment to our schools, we funded it. That wasn't always the case. So often the, the legislature would say, we'll give you $120 million. And then when it came time to actually pay that bill, they'd give them 80. And that leaves our schools in a really tough position. The last four years, we've, we've given hundreds of millions of dollars to schools. And every time we promised it, we actually followed through. And we hope to do that same thing this year. Just, just so we're clear here, and so the viewer is clear, the legislature is uh, completing fiscal year 2020 at the end of this month. And then begin what you're talking about in the budget is looking forward to fiscal 2021. That's a new fiscal year that starts on, on July 1st. Now, in your answer to Kay's question is, you're not anticipating cuts in school aid in that budget for 2021? Yeah, so we've, we've already made a, pr a commitment for about 99 to 100 million dollars of new money for K-12 schools for next year. Right. Um, at this time, we don't anticipate having to, to cut that back and for next you, year's budget. And do you anticipate uh, having to dip into the cash reserves next year? The no, whatever budget we set, we're, we, the, the goal and the plan is to set a budget that we don't have to dip into the cash reserves. We want to leave enough surplus that even if revenues go down, we have wiggle room within that, that, that ongoing revenue. Worst case, absolute worst case scenario, go to the cash reserves, but, but we want to make sure the budget still has wiggle room even before getting to the reserves.